is a comic review of Fantastic Four number one. Clearly not a real issue. It would be lovely if that was the real issue. What brilliant condition it would. I would, of course, would have it probably slabbed and everything else. However, this is the facsimile edition. And uh, see, covers obviously slightly harder, not hard back. Now it would be really nice if they brought, and especially of course this year, or next year I should say, is coming up the anniversary. I wonder if they'll bring out this again with hardback edition and maybe with a couple more extra pages, if not a lot more extra pages, I would think some serious bonus material would be really nice. There must be more things, maybe all the fans' re recollections, all those sort of things. You could pile this in with loads of people's comments about not just the five or six at the back here, you've got some essays, but I would have thought the fans would be able to uh, create a real, really brilliant one. And also maybe include like the what if stories and things with Fantastic Four. Anyway, that's just my thought of what they would really nice hardback edition of this. Maybe sort of big size as well would be even nicer. So to the actual stories. Now this came out in 2018. Uh, it's Fantastic Four and it published as a one shot. Now the I always think I should before I get further, I always love the monster. The monster just sort of changes in size. Sometimes he's really massive. Sometimes it's just small. And he's just come out, obviously, out the uh, the ground there. And you've got this copper that turns up every once in a while. Sometimes he's in the, on the cover. Sometimes he's not. Very weird. But you've always got his rope. I love the ropes. We're virtually hanging off. But well, what's he doing? And the thing is, you're not actually seeing them. He's stretching very much. He's got a little stretch in his arm. Really can't tell. But uh, poor old uh, Sue Storm there. She's uh, been together for the first time. Because, of course, there were early issues of... Sue Storm, Human Torch, etc. The thing that obviously people just haven't found ever. It would be nice if they were found. They're not. So you've got the story going to the Fantastic Four and a lovely big uh, Fantastic Four and you've got obviously nice sort of along the top to show who they are, which is really great. And you've got the initial, obviously, Reed is just standing there with his flair. And you've got Sue Storm being shown like a socialite, a society friend. Which is something you really never saw later on. So you've got this initial sort of scene there. And the quality is brilliant. I mean, I think this is probably, without comparing, obviously, a Fantastic Four issue one, which I will never, ever get. Uh, I would not be able to tell whether this is better or worse. But I think you really be hard pushed to say, I think that is really, really nice, sharp quality. Colours jump off the page. Obviously, it doesn't have the same nostalgic thing. It never will, because, of course, it's a copy and you've got the glossy page. Lots of people don't like that. The colours, they would, they would turn around and say the colours are too intense. I can understand that. Obviously, it'd be nice if they ever do bring out a special edition that they include the actual print that they use, you know, the actual, so they can, you can see the original page, all the roughness and the various, and that would be nice to put the two together because I think it's always nice to have this, the cleaned up version, but also to put an original as well. Obviously, if they found some original pages, it would be even better. But unless that happens mysteriously, I don't think that's ever going to happen. So you've got the uh, Human Torch person. Now, he changed a bit. The Human Torch, you see, you've got all the characters. They all whiz off. Obviously, the Ben Grimm, the thing, and Sue Storm, they all head to the building to meet up with Reed. And then, weirdly, about a third of the way through the book, you've got the origin. Suddenly, it's a flashback. It's very unusual. You don't often have that. I always think that sometimes the stories sort of uh, like Thor or whatever or the X-Men, you don't, well, the X-Men, you didn't really have an origin story. I mean, the origin stories were a lot later when they did the sort short solo stories. So, uh, yeah, just still an odd way of doing it, having the, instead of having it, quite often, of course, in many books, you'd have had just like the first page would have had the origin and it would, by the end of it, we would have had to find it, now they're the Fantastic Four. And there would have been like two or three panels and you would see the cosmic rays turning them into the thing and everything. That would be it. Also, I'm not certain which town they were in or city because I think it was later it was called Central City. And I must admit, flicking through this, doesn't seem to be any mention of where this is. It could be anywhere. It could be New York. It could be anywhere. So uh, obviously going to space. And you've got obviously the origin point where they all suddenly... However, of course, they don't know how long this will last. Maybe their powers suddenly vanish the next time. Why would they? Or maybe they alternate the powers. Maybe one time Susan Storm becomes the human torch and so on and so on. That would have complicated things. 
but they owed me the mole man. I loved a bit there. Look at that. A very yellow looking uh, Reed Richards. It was really good and also a yellow thing as well. And also Sue as well. Most odd. However, I'm surprised they didn't put uh, costumes on them straight away. You'd think they would have done, but I suppose uh, like Challenge is the Unknown, they didn't have that. But obviously all the superheroes from the 40s all had. So you would have thought, unless they were trying to make it look like a monster book at the point, because it sort of reads like a monster book, because of course that was the sort of stuff, strange tales, tales to astonish, tales of suspense, all those sort of world of fantasy, those sort of books were monster ones, science fiction monster. And you've got this, this monster that comes up. Again, he varies in size. He's like the growing man. He sort of, sort of changes. Well, Ant-Man, Giant-Man seems to vary in size, depending on what they want them to do. I love this bit as well, Valley of Diamonds. You've got the Valley of Diamonds. I love the adverts as well. They've got all the adverts. You've got the Valley of Diamonds. Now, Mole Man never used that again. Why didn't he just use this for all these diamonds? He could have been a very rich guy. Clearly, spends his time down here. Why? Too simple. And you've got all these other ones, Duke, Box, Bank, and then Test Your Talent, I think, and everything's resolved, the story's finished. What a classic. It is a classic. It's obviously a very primitive, very basic story. It's the first issue, and then obviously with subsequent issues, two, three, four, five, it really started to improve super. Yeah, I loved Fantastic Four early issues, but it, even I can say that it's pretty, pretty primitive storyline. You know, you've got, it's basically a monster issue spread over quite a few pages. The one thing, um, one, yes, it does have the job code. So it's V372. Nice they included that as well. So you've got all the end adverts as well that you would have on the back pages. And then you've got bonus material. And this was probably the biggest disappointment, this one. And I hope if they do do, who knows? Who knows if they will do it? I assume they will. It'd be nice if they did. A special, special edition of this sort of book in hardback. But I hope they put some more extras, a lot more extras than this. Surely they must have some photos. Didn't they take photos? Didn't they have, what's your name, information around the time? Must be more than this. Maybe some recollections of the artist. Uh, obviously, sometimes, of course, they don't know who did all the work of these things. So, uh, obviously, Jack Kirby did the art. But I'm just saying that things like the colour, lettering, and all those sort of things, as people have been sort of saying, who did the lettering? Who did this? Who did that? Who was the production managers? All those sort of things. Obviously, it wasn't all. But you've got these uh, essays at the start, which is quite nice with all the so Martin Goodman, etc. Martin, because at this point, Stanley, they, they were saying that they were losing interest in it because of all the monster books. But obviously, they thought, well, let's one roll of the dice, another roll of the dice, and they ended up making this classic. And it is one of the classics. Now, it's not one of my favourites, I'd have to say that Fantastic Four number one will never be on my list of all-time best comics. But obviously, clearly, it's an important, significant comic. Like Action Comics number one, uh, the famous funnies and all those sort of things. Those sort of issues will always showcase four. Fantastic 432, clearly issue that everyone knows. is a, That's my favourite because it's my first comic. So... Uh, You've got all these sort of little articles. Hopefully they would get another one. They would put fans' recollection, because fans would have lots of memories. I, that's one book I, I love. I've got one book, these books called like, Who, where it's the, the band, and it's got all the mentions of all the people that went to the concerts, and they're all recollections of them, you know, what they did at the concerts. And you think, wow, you know, when, you know what happened? You know, the band came on. It's not the band remembering all these things. It's what fans thought at the time. Likewise, it would be lovely if you had like pages upon pages of fans' recollections of what they bought, Fantastic Four number one, and of course the other things they bought at the time, because they obviously would have gone into the comic spin and you've seen the comic spin and you think, hmm, I'll never that one. Or I'll have an Archie issue, or I'll have a Dell issue, a Dell comic, or I'll have a, you know, Justice League of America. Oh, what's this? New, Fantastic Four number one. You know, or did you get it because your family bought it? You know, you suddenly got it, or you got it. Your mate gave it to you. Those sort of stories, just uh, nice recollections of the period. And also people later on as well. Because people obviously have bought this later on. Collectors who have bought it. It'd be nice to get the stories of the collectors who have searched all their life to get these issues, the best issue they can get. So, And also, if they could put the original without all being cleaned up, 
that would be nice as well because this is trouble. A lot of people get slightly what's the name about the colour schemes because the colour schemes, of course, very highly saturated, very intense colour. Lots of people prefer it to be in the way it was back in the 60s, 61. So uh, obviously that would be nice as well. I love the uh, the synopsis at the end as well. They've got synopsis, obviously Stanley's brilliant synopsis there, fantastic for original typewritten synopsis. And I love the fact that uh, Reed's girlfriend, an actress, she was an actress. And I think they should have kept that. I think that would have made it much more. Sue Storm really didn't have, for many issues, that much of a depth of background. They didn't, I think she was always, to me, the most powerful, best character. Sue Storm, always they pushed, pushed her back in the story. Personally, they should have given her a lot more story. I think she should have had appearances regularly in Strange Tales instead of Human Torch, who was generally a pretty non-entity character. So Sue Storm, they could have developed a lot more. And being an actress would have gave her that sort of thing. You could have had, especially when they did that story with the uh, Submariner when he was uh, doing his movie, they, which they never really ever, we never saw anything about that. Or did it ever finish? Did they ever bring it into production? Who knows? But you've got lots of bits of And also a lovely bit here where, where they're worry, worrying whether the, their powers will last. And that was never really ever sort of ever questioned. You know, they're always going to have their powers. Why? Why is there, Why are they always going to have their powers? No real rhyme or reason. They could lose their powers, you know, and, uh, you know, if it was as simple as getting powers, everyone would just be whizzing up in space, getting cosmic, cosmic rays every, every time to get superpowers. Obviously work for the uh, Mad Ghost or the Red Ghost or whatever. It's not a mad thing I'm thinking about. Red Ghost. He was pretty mad, the ghost, anyway. Uh, then... Yeah, and then you of course the next thing, which is slightly odd, you've got here about chapter, you've got the chapter structure, which is quite nice, but it goes on to the, obviously saying that about the next story. And then you've got some lovely, uh, I love this one, the John Byrne one, uh, Hidden Hidden Years, X-Men, one of my favourite series. I love that series. I would love to see an epic collection of that, or a complete, It'd be really nice. Maybe they will. Uh, there's the Marvel press poster, and there's loads and loads of other examples where they've obviously done some variations. I, I, that's a good bit here. Featuring Ant-Man, Madam Deuce, Sue, uh, She-Hulk, she Miss Thing, together for four minutes in one Marty magazine. <laughs> At least they're sort of taking the, what's your name on that one? Uh, assembled as Avengers facing the fist and so on and so on. Together for the first time, you know. Quite, and some, of course, leave it off. And I love the way that sometimes the old, um, the guy that's the back, the old police officer, sometimes appears in some of these. You've got the police officer in the back. Sometimes you don't. You've got, I love that one with John Byrne. It's great. House of M one. But I love this one. It's absolutely great. Because, of course, I'm never going to get the Fantastic Four original issue. So uh, this fax in me is absolutely fine. And I say, if they bring out a new one next year, hopefully hardback, Oh, I'm certain I'll be uh, probably suckered into buying that one as well, because I love these ones. Great little issue. So Fantastic Four number one, facsimile from 2018.